you're breaking up with me? But you're breaking my heart! Uh, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. See, I was talking about your literal heart. You know, the thing that beats inside of you, the thing that keeps you alive. Ah, <laughs> uh, never mind her. Why don't you guys just come with me? Your heart is a pretty complicated organ, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to simplify things a little bit. There are veins that carry deoxygenated blood from the rest of your body back to the heart. This blood gets pumped to your lungs where a gas exchange occurs, putting oxygen in the blood and taking carbon dioxide out. Now this new O2 equipped blood goes back to your heart, which then can be carried to the rest of your body through arteries. The aorta is the biggest artery in your body, carrying blood out of your heart, and it branches off into all sorts of arteries that eventually connect to the rest of the muscles in your body. However, your heart is a muscle too, and it needs oxygen to function. So there are coronary arteries that branch from the aorta and deliver oxygen-rich blood back to the heart muscle. So let's recap what we just learned. Your blood carries oxygen to muscles in your body because your muscles need oxygen in order to move. Blood that doesn't have oxygen, which we call deoxygenated blood, goes to your heart through veins, where it can then be sent to the lungs to get oxygen. That blood that has all this new oxygen in it gets sent to muscles in your body, including your heart, through arteries. Your heart needs oxygen to pump and beat. Sound good so far? I guess. So generally, this is a pretty good system of keeping your body functioning and happy. However, heart disease is one of the biggest killers in our country, so clearly something can go wrong with this system. Now, the good news is that most of the time you can prevent heart attacks and heart disease through diet and a healthy lifestyle. But what exactly breaks a heart then? A myocardial infarction, or what most of us call a heart attack, is the death of heart cells caused by blockage of blood flow to the heart. Most of the time, this happens when a coronary artery, remember these guys carry oxygenated blood back to the heart, occludes, a fancy word for blocked, by atherosclerotic plaque. See, over time, cholesterol, fatty acids, and white blood cells can collect and harden on the insides of the artery, narrowing the space through which blood can flow. No blood means no oxygen to the heart, and no oxygen means serious damage or death of the heart muscle tissue. Cardiac myocytes, adult heart cell muscles, cannot regenerate or heal themselves, so instead your body forms a scar in the damaged area. Wait, doesn't that lead to irregular heartbeats and other really bad consequences? Exactly. Scars can't move the way the rest of the heart does when it pumps because it can't contract, so the heart becomes weaker. Now the way the damage is usually treated is through bypass surgery, which involves taking healthy vessels from another part of your body and grafting them onto the damaged area. Drugs that reduce the blood clotting can be used, as well as other surgical techniques like angioplasty, which uses balloons to stretch out the occluded artery. But as you can imagine, there's tons of risks associated with these treatments. That's why there's so much research going on today on building artificial and healthy heart walls and blood vessels. One field of research seeks to create vascular prostheses, or essentially create new blood vessels to replace or repair the damaged ones. There are three approaches to this field. Doctors use a fabric that's kind of like a thin sponge and roll it up into a tube. It gets covered with a thin layer of natural stuff from your blood, so your body gets tricked into thinking it's a normal blood vessel. The problem with this approach is that this graft tends to be a lot stiffer than normal blood vessels, creating what is called a compliance mismatch. The stiffness of the prosthesis doesn't match the stiffness of the native vessel, which it is stitched to. This prevents blood from flowing normally and can lead to another heart attack. Now another approach to use is autografts, where vessels are taken from another part of the patient's body, just like the bypass surgery I mentioned before. This isn't an ideal situation, but generally works okay. This leads us to our current situation. What if we could just grow blood vessels in the lab? The newest approach is to use a tissue engineered blood vessel. In this case, a researcher will take a scaffold, a sponge-like material made of special proteins that supports and holds cells and is similar in its biology to the environment of normal cells. They'll add cells, endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells, and culture it in a certain condition. Sometimes they'll even pulse it to promote the formation of blood vessel tissue. After 
after a while, all the ingredients will come together as a vessel that is strong but still stretchy. They can roll up the material just like a vessel and implant it in the patient. Another field of research seeks to engineer heart muscle tissue to either repair or patch up the damaged part of the heart. Similar to engineering blood vessels, the key to this is finding the right kind of scaffold and the right kind of cells. There's a lot that still needs to be done in this field, but hopefully I've given you enough background information to start learning about heart engineering. Who knows, you could be the creator of the next best engineered heart tissue. I'm on it.